All right, welcome back to Mornings on Main Street. Live this morning, a buddy Alan Carpet in Donaldson as we help uh, raise donations for Dreams and Wishes of Tennessee. Now, last weekend, the Mount Juliet Christmas Parade was supposed to happen, but the tornado came through there uh, and did the right decision to postpone it because he had to help all the our friends and neighbors out there. So it's back on this Saturday. Let's bring in Justin Beasley, the public information officer of the city of Mount Juliet. Looking great today, Justin. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, as long as we had the internet connection working, I think uh, this one – this one's going to be a success, right? Yeah, it is. All right, so Saturday morning, I, I, I got on, uh, turned the TV on, turned my computer on, and, and I saw you out in the community first thing Saturday morning helping out. Uh, before we talk about the Christmas parade, take me back to Saturday morning, your first thoughts when you saw uh, the destruction and everything that happened in your community. Yeah, a ton of destruction uh, in Willoughby Station in Mount Juliet. But, hey, Joe, I'm not going to bury the lead. No lives lost in Mount Juliet, so we're extremely thankful for that. Our prayers are with those families that lost a lot of people, uh, certainly in Mayfield, Kentucky, and the surrounding states and counties. But, uh, yeah, it was an EF1 tornado about 100 miles, 100 yards wide, 105 miles per hour as far as the winds are concerned, traveling 7.6 miles, uh, impacted about five different locations in Mount Juliet. Uh, really no main roads, but really a lot of devastation and Willoughby Station around Brisbane Lane. Uh, we set up command center there on Saturday morning. Police, fire, were immediately after it, uh, helping out anybody and everybody. Our public works crews also picking up debris, and they're continuing to do that this week. Um, it, it's almost weird to say, but Mount Juliet is, I won't say numb to this, but everybody knows exactly what to do with how hard that area has been hit lately um, as far as the, the process of, of healing and recovering not only immediately, but in the weeks and months that follow. So, um, we, yes, we decided to push that Christmas parade back. Our immediate focus, of course, was on the people and the citizens that we serve. And also, the thing is, now we have something to look forward to on Saturday. No matter the devastation, no matter what everybody's going through, uh, it's a reward to have something to look forward to and celebrate the Christmas spirit and, and the risen Savior. Yeah, I know we covered, uh, you know, I don't want to say we, you know, it's something great that we got to cover back in March of 2020, the tornado that came through Mount Julia. But we saw then firsthand of neighbors helping neighbors, strangers helping neighbors and people showing up. And from this weekend, from your Facebook posts and your Facebook lives that you were showing, a lot of volunteers showed up in the area to help out the people. They had no idea uh, around. They just knew that they needed help and they showed up. And that's another great thing about the community that that you represent. Absolutely. And I said it. We had so many volunteers helping within the community, within that neighborhood at Willoughby Station, where we spent most of our time Saturday. I thought people were coming from the outskirts to help when we were discouraging that at the moment because we were trying to assess the damage, figure out opportunities for people to help. We really didn't need anybody outside of the city and outside of Willoughby Station to come to those specific areas and the other areas that are hit as well. We didn't need anybody else that didn't already live there to help. But we had tons of people asking how to help. That just speaks to what the city of Mount Juliet is. And, and we can say we've, we've seen the same thing in every other area that we've seen when we worked in local news as far as tornado areas hit. But uh, it definitely showed in Mount Juliet this weekend. And, and those neighbors were out and about. And we had, you know, ML Rose with Lisa. She came by and handed out 175 burgers wow. with their food truck on Sunday for absolutely free. People don't do that everywhere. And, and Mount Juliet, we posted a photo the other day, Mount Juliet strong, uh, never more true than this week, and especially March of 2020 as well. well. What's the, I know you've been out and about every single day since Saturday. What's the, what do people need? Where can they go to find stuff out? Where can they send donations? How can they do the help out? Yeah, right now, uh, the best bet would just be to call uh, your local law enforcement at the Mount Juliet Police Department, um, also Red Cross and, and, and anything else. Right now, we're, again, still trying to assess the damage, see if uh, there's anything else we need as far as uh, uh, government assistance. But, uh, again, the damage is, is is just in five areas. No lives were lost, and people are examining their houses right now. So uh, hopefully it remains that way, and there's not a, a ton of need of other support. But I'm sure people will find those outlets to, to make sure that they can help out. And But, again, we, we, we place somebody um, with some resources that were displaced out of a home and had nowhere to go through the police department just yesterday. So uh, we encourage you, if, if you're in dire need, call them and they will help you get the resources that you need uh, accustomed to your situation. All right, dude, the Christmas parade, I know it was pushed back a week. Was the time pushed back a little bit? Take me through Saturday, what's going to happen? 
Yeah, we're going to push it back to 3 o'clock. Uh, it's something we didn't want to do, but it's something we kind of want to do to help out the businesses along North Mount Juliet Road. I mean, you look at it, this is the Saturday before Christmas. It's sneaking up on us. Uh, if they can keep their registers open for two, three more hours uh, with a heavy inflow of traffic, uh, you know, that's the, that's a big difference, especially in this year as, as we battle, uh, you know, the COVID limitations and the supply chain. So we mainly made that decision based on the small businesses in Mount Juliet that keep the city afloat and keep the city thriving. Uh, but we're still going to have a good parade We're you know, we don't expect to have the same number of uh, 80, 90 participants uh, that had floats. But if you want to get in the Christmas spirit and you want to celebrate Mount Juliet and our veterans, it's a patriotic theme. You show up to North Mount Juliet Road, you show up with your float. And we're also going to have a Christmas tree lighting after. I know you talked to Chuck Workman uh, last week with Shiloh Baptist Church. That's still on. We put the tree uh, back up yesterday after the winds hit that. So we're going to go forward. We're, we're, we get the best of both worlds. We helped our community and served them Saturday and beyond. And we're also going to have a Christmas parade this Saturday as well. So uh, we're fortunate. It, it worked out that way. Uh, but the citizens came first this last Saturday. What time, if somebody says to go to the Christmas tree lighting, what time is that on Saturday? So the parade's going to start at 3. I'd imagine it lasts an hour, again, with participants being a little bit lower. Uh, about that time will be 4, 4.15. It'll get a little darker. We're going to have food trucks, Christmas ornament, decorating, um, also some singing with Shallow Baptist. And about that time, when that wraps up, we'll see the Christmas tree lit around 5.30, around 4.30 or 5. Um, you know, we're trying to roll with the punches with, with everything that happened last Saturday. Uh, but you will see a Christmas tree lit between 4.30 and 5 and, and get in the Christmas spirit and, and celebrate the real reason for the season with Jesus. Uh, exactly. And uh, also, uh, shout out to the Mount Juliet Fire Department. I saw your thing Friday, early Saturday morning uh, with the fire chief. Great man who loves that community. And they were out in a heartbeat. And they've worked nonstop since Saturday morning to serve the community. And, uh, again, as we've covered news in many, many years, <clears throat> excuse me, have a fire chief like that is not in every community. No, and uh, Chief Jamie Luffman is a, a sincere individual that he has so many tools and, and so many people respect him to be able to, you know, feel comforted in that time of need. And he's also great with helping me, you know, uh, guide me to get any and all information out to the city about Juliet with people on how to, you know, make sure that any repairman that's out has a license and make sure that people aren't, you know, taking advantage of others in this situation, how to get help, when the electricity is going to come back on. Uh, we, we hope that we, we provided the citizens with what we needed this past Saturday, and uh, it, it's our pleasure. It's what we signed up for, and it's what you can count on moving forward. All right, appreciate you, brother. Good work. Thanks for hopping on. Usually we hop on, we have a good time, we get goofy and have a lot of fun and everything, but it was important day to get the message out of the recovery that's going on and, of course, about the parade that's happening on Saturday starting at 3 o'clock. Justin, appreciate you, brother. I'll see you soon. We'll, we'll goof off next time. Yeah, no, you got that, buddy. All right, have a good day. Justin Beasley, the public information officer from Mount Juliet with the very latest on the parade that's happening on Saturday. Uh, still the work, a lot of work to be done helping the community and, of course, uh, what's going on Saturday at the Christmas parade. So thank you, Justin. We'll come back, wrap up, wrap up this great show live from Buddy Allen Carpet and Donaldson with Celebrity Birthdays. That's next. You're watching Mornings on Main Street.